Greetings Petrolheads, welcome back to Automation the Car Company Tycoon Game and today we are going to do another review uh, it's this one, the Buffalo made by James Brown there is a base and a premium version as we can see and it's a minivan so let's get right into this once it actually finishes loading okay so right right into this chassis here it is it is a corrosion resistant steel monocoque with the engine being mounted longitudinally double wishbones up front, multi-link suspension on the rear end to make, I mean, double wishbone multi-link is a setup that not only makes the car very sporty, it also makes it very comfortable like it is the it is the setup that will make for the best comfort so I understand that Sportiness may not really be a priority for this car anyway. So um yeah it, it it's still good to have this kind of setup. Polymer panels. Uh, well that's an interesting choice on a minivan because it's not really that mini to begin with. And also um because of the safety, it would be quite a lot better I think if you went for at least aluminium or you know preferably corrosion resistant steel or carbon fiber if it's like a high-end top tier minivan which it isn't as far as looks go like the front is pretty simplistic nothing really wrong about it nothing really too exciting either though so um, on the rear end we have some pretty funky taillights <laughs> but you know it's 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 fine not every car needs to be just exactly the same you know it's it's good to have a minivan that stands out a little bit on the rear end but on the front it's you know pretty conservative if I do say so myself so what do we have it is rear wheel drive rear wheel drive only that's interesting I mean Looking at this body shell, we do have a not so not so big engine bay here and a lot of weight here over the rear axle. So the weight distribution should not be as bad on, as on other you know front engine uh, rear wheel drive body shells. But we'll see. The engine is a 2.8 liter 5 volt per cylinder turbocharged N94 made from aluminium and board and stroke are almost the same so it's a pretty square engine if you will then billet steel crank with i-beam steel con rods and lightweight forged pistons really going for high rpms huh no quality in here though and then 10.4 compression with a turbo that's actually quite high Cam profile of 40 makes for a good mid-range. VVT on all cams for slightly better power and economy. And we got a ball bearing and water to air large intercooler. Making sure that this engine is not always nice and cool when you decide to rev it out. Um, Compressor is 47 millimeters, turbine 47.5, AR ratios is is 0.78. There's a lot of pot potential left in this. I mean, it is a 2.8 liter turbo, and makes less than 100 horsepower per liter, but it's fine. It's it's it should make the car very drivable, I guess. Direct injection, single configuration, standard intake, and regular fuel, presumably built for the American market. And a 13.5 fuel mixture is kind of average there. Ignition timing of 52, that uh, could be could be could be worse. 6,500 RPM limit. Again, nothing too out of the ordinary
we do have a pretty good power band in the top range though if you can see if you look at the at the graph here this line represents 200 horsepower which we already have just slightly before 4000 rpm and then the max is 250 so you're always in that range between 200 and 250 horsepower if you actually were to drive this this car uh, in a sporty way you know w when you shift at the red line you end up in somewhere in the area that already has more than 200 horsepower and that's that's pretty good so let's see what else we got on here it's a six-speed automatic making for good comfort and drivability top speed is really high apparently <laughs> Viscous LSD Hard long life road tires because it is a minivan after all 235s front and rear Like on a rear wheel drive car I would prefer to have like wider tires on the rear than on the front That Maybe that's just me though Steel rims Is nothing too fancy and you got vent discs up front and with two pistons up front and one piston on the rear. We also got vent discs up on the rear end. Oh, and point, yeah, well, 0.2% brake fade is kind of meaningless, but... So it was the front? Yeah, it was the front that caused the brake fade. Interesting, because 320 millimeters uh, of rotor size is usually enough for most cars. But this one it isn't, because it's probably very heavy. Um, what else do we got? Fully clad under tray for good top speed and fuel economy. The cooling airflow is more than enough. We also have uh, some brake airflow and still have a little bit of brake fade. Hmm. Then seven seats with standard interior and infotainment. Also advanced safety to compensate for the plastic body panels. Um, also all driver aids except for launch control. I mean launch control is maybe a little bit maybe a little bit unnecessary in a car like this anyway. So we get progressive springs of gas monitor tube dampers and active sway bars. Active sway bars? I don't really see the point of those in in a in a minivan like this, but you know if you want to have them, go ahead. No bottoming out. Roll angle is yeah, you know it, it's a van, so it's acceptable. The cost is twelve thousand nine hundred, which for a car this size is actually not that bad. The drivability is a fifty-two point nine. Sport is twenty-nine point five. So that's actually quite good. 42 comfort despite only having standard uh, interior and infotainment is also fine. 65 safety is kind of a little bit surprising given the plastic panels but then again we have 1.7 tons of weight and we have advanced safety features. The economy is pre pretty damn good as well. So overall nice job on, on the base version even though I don't agree with every every single thing about this car but yeah service costs on a big car like this with a 2.8 liter turbo engine the service costs are never really gonna be that cheap so 2000 is pretty realistic there it's it's not overly expensive though so let's now look into the premium version which is still rear-wheel drive. It has a little bit of chrome here, then some chrome down there, then this little um, strap that was plastic on the base version is now chrome as well. And yeah, it just looks a little bit more... It's just more... It's just got more chrome, let's, let's put it that way. We got the same engine as before, so what's different about the trim now? Still a six-speed box. Gear, gears are a little bit longer. Still a viscous LSD. 
Still 235, hard long life road tires. Alloy wheel still. Which is always nice. Um, we got the vented discs. Yeah, still the same brake setup as before. Um, also still the same aero setup. What I imagine is different though is, yeah, this here. Premium interior and infotainment now <clears throat> with advanced safety again. This is all still the same too. So overall we gained 81 kilograms of weight. We lost just a little bit of drivability and sportiness, but we gained 8 points in comfort and almost 4 points in prestige. And it's about $2,200 more expensive to make and uses 0.6 liters per 100 kilometers more fuel. Um, what about the service costs? They're only slightly higher. The reliability went down a little bit because we got more electric stuff in the interior that, you know, is bound to fail at some point, which affects the overall drivability. Uh, not the drivability, but the reliability. Excuse me. So the acceleration time, we haven't actually looked at this in, on the base model. 7.6 seconds on this car, 271 kilometers an hour top speed. If we go to the base trim. We will see that it does 7.5 and then 272. So the, the premium version is actually slower, slightly slower at least, than the, uh, than the base version. Which is also something that might get a little bit of contro controversy from car magazines. To me, like, it's a minivan, it's about its practicality, it's not about its sheer speed. However, what I will say is that rear-wheel drive does not seem like the best of choices for a car like this. Um, because y you really want your car to be controllable and, you know, usually if if um, you're gonna sell a minivan it'll be to people who drive uh, who use it to drive a lot which is why reliability is very important I mean the engine is very reliable we've seen that 73.9 is totally fine um, but also you want you want the car to be controllable under any circumstance the, the traction and stability control they help but you know some some people are or actually many people are still shying away from rear-wheel drive cars because they think oh it's 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 dangerous in the rain it's dangerous in the winter and and all that and it with all these drive rates it it isn't but tell that to some of the old-fashioned people who still think it is um, <laughs> I would have gone with all-wheel drive, but then again you probably wouldn't be able to uh, fit a 2.8 liter turbo in inline 4 into this car. So that is that is the problem with that, the engine bay on this car is very small. So maybe, I mean, given the circumstance that it is rear-wheel drive, it's actually pretty good. Um, the base version is is fine as is. The premium version is kind of lacking a little bit in extra stuff. It's uh, like basically what it what it is is it's the same car only with a little bit better interior. But the total cost went went up by more than two thousand dollars, which means there would be like a five thousand dollar price difference between the two cars. And given that. The base version is just as powerful, a little bit more reliable, more economical and faster. Many people would think that it's not worth buying the premium version. That's that's one thing I would point out. Um, the automatic gearbox is 
fine for comfort and drivability but you know and that's not really your fault uh, again the, the automatics in this game are shifting like really slow so again I mean I can't blame you for that but that is something that is really kind of disturbing me <laughs> about the game the, the more I play it because I, I I want to have a good automatic in some of my cars but and again this even if it's 2015 and at the maximum possible quality it's still shifting really slow so <laughs> anyway good base model premium model could be a little bit more more different a little bit more exciting if you will uh, so hope you guys enjoyed the episode if you did click the like button it helps out a great deal subscribe if you want to see more in the future for now thanks for watching and i'll see you next time